Starting off on this canvas, we coated the whole thing with some thinned out white. This will help us blend the sky a bit. It also makes little bits of paint cover larger areas. The colors I used on this sky were ultramarine blue, and then we mixed in some black to that to give us a much darker color to put in the corners. We do this because when you're looking at a painting, your eye will automatically be attracted to the brightest point. By darkening the corners, you're forcing the point to be closer to the center. You don't want it to be exactly in the middle, but somewhere close. In art, there's what's called the rule of three, simply meaning take your canvas and visually cut it into thirds. Somewhere on either of those cut lines should lie your focal point. In this painting, it'll be the river. We start our background off with a large plateau. We mixed up some burnt umber with some burnt sienna and laid in an outline. Then we brightened that color with some white to give us a small amount of highlight. This area will be in shadow, so don't make it too bright. It doesn't matter what it looks like at this point. Really all we're doing is blocking in some color. Later, after all of this is dry, we can come back and make corrections to anything we don't like till we're happy with how it looks. We then use some of the ultramarine blue and black mix we made to block in the river. Water gives some people a lot of trouble. It takes several layers to make this look right. The water at the bottom will be much darker, and as it gets closer to the surface, more light will show until it's nearly pure white. If you're wanting to paint still water, less white and sharper reflections will give you this look. We then start blocking in some of the grass and bushy areas. Again, doesn't much matter what it looks like, just laying in some color. We will need to go back in over some of this as it's far too bright for background. The further something gets away from you, the darker and less clear it will become. When painting, we can use this to trick your eye into thinking it sees distance when it's really just looking at a flat plane. We then decide maybe the water falls off a little rocky area. We use that same ultramarine blue and black and then we added in some cerulean blue to start blending in that second layer of water. We can then start laying in our rocks. To achieve this effect, we took one of our flathead brushes and loaded it full of burnt umber and then swiped one side in white. By making little curved strokes with our white side facing the light source, we can simultaneously create the shadow and highlight of our rocks. It's easy to just go crazy with this. Sometimes it even looks good just filling the whole canvas with this.
now that it's had time to dry, it'll be much easier to add more color to the canvas without it mixing in with that undercoat. We start off today with the clouds. I feel like there might be a storm rolling in, so I went with gray clouds. Just using our fan brush and letting it dance around a bit, and then taking a clean, dry brush, you want to blend out the bottom a little bit and then fluff with gentle curved strokes. If you want, you can even add a few highlights on these. Better if you wait until it dries, but whatever works best for you. We then mixed burnt umber, burnt sienna, and white to use as our highlight color on our plateau. We took our flathead brush and filled it with pure burnt sienna and then swiped one side into that highlight color. Using the marks our knife made when doing our undercoat, we can make a very nice looking rock face. I'm not happy with most of what I do for the remainder of this video, so I'll just let it speak for itself. I'm putting this one on the side for now because as you can see in my unboxing video I've got a lot of new toys and paints to play with and I'm just really excited to show you guys what I have in store for the next one. <laughs> 